if you're a uh, in Pakistan, the 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 Indians, right? Because they didn't make hijra or whatever. I don't know. I mean, they see them as less, right? If you're from Hyderabad, right? I'm a Hyderabadi, you know. And so I, that's, there's some Hyderabadis. They think because they're from Hyderabad, they're automatically better than the rest of the Indians just by being from Hyderabad, right? So this is like Nesab and Hasab and things like that. Americans, very common. We're number one. Because they're from America, they're number one. If you go into Hausa land, houses are convinced that they're a superior race, right? Many Hausa people feel that they're better than, uh, certainly better than Yoruba and Igbo, and probably better than the Fulani. But the Fulani will see themselves as better than the Hausa. If you go to Mauritania, the Kunta will see themselves as better than the Masuma. Or, you know, if you're from Tejikanit, they are naturally better than... And this is a disease. It's a human disease, widespread affliction. The Damascans deem themselves better than the Halabis. Right? And a Shami. They even call Damascus Sham. They won't even let anybody else be a Shami. <laughs> right? So, peop, this is a problem. This is a disease in the heart. Deeming yourself better simply because of some quality that you have. Like the quality of being from Damascus. Or the quality of being a Nejdi. Right? The Nejdis will deem themselves better than the Hijazis. Right? They call them Akhlaf al hujjaj And often in their language, you'll, you'll see all this type of uh, arrogance. Right? Um, in, in this culture, they have a lot of these type terms. A lot of racist terminology. But you'll find them in all cultures. You'll find them in all cultures. And these are all, this is takabbur. Because Allah says, Inna akramukum and Allah atqaakum. The best of you with Allah are the people of taqwa. And what this does is deludes you into thinking that somebody uh, doesn't have taqwa simply because he can't. How could he have taqwa? You know, he's a Hindi or he's a, uh, you know, he's a Nijiri or he's whatever. Mm-hmm. What about the people, I know the modern phenomenon, who have tikabur because they're from no, that's not a modern phenomenon. That's, that goes way back. Yeah, I mean, there's people who, who are sada and, and they have takabur. They're human beings, you know. They're human beings. People who are from the family of the Prophet Wasallam. I mean, of all things to have takabur for, that, that's a pretty good one. <laughs> I mean, I'd put that up there with... <laughs> in Nasab, that's number one. Do you know what I mean? And that's the danger because sometimes these things do have validity. And this is the danger of it. Right? In other words, there is something to be said about being from the family of the Prophet. It's a great honor. But there are many hadiths that put fear in your heart. The Prophet ﷺ, there's a hadith that says his nasab benefits. But there's a hadith that says, uh, you know, إذا لا يسرعكم النسب if your actions hold you back, your, your nesib, your lineage won't speed you up. Right? In other words, if you have nesib, if you don't have action to go with it, it's not going to get you anywhere. No fuel, good car, no gas. <laughs> right? So if you're a Sharif, it's a Mercedes, but the action is still gasoline. You're not going anywhere. Right? You have to, you, you have to put something in there. So that, that's a real serious one. And there are many hadiths warning us uh, about the danger of it. Now, how you cure yourself, one of the cures is to recognize, first of all, what are you from? And your source, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, right, that you are from ma'in maheen, a vile fluid. Your source is a vile fluid. One of them said that, uh, that you, he, somebody, كان يتكبروا, and one of the salaf, he said, Subhanallah, يحملوا بين جنبيه العذرة, you know, he's carrying between his two sides a bunch of feces. Right? I mean, in other words, where, why is, where's the takabur? Where's the source of the takabur? That he's just a bag of blood like everybody else. Right? And, you know, they have crude colloquials in this culture that I won't go into. But, I mean, people do have, in every culture, they recognize. Nobody likes to kabbur. 
right? The problem is the mutakabbir does not see his kabbur, takabbur. And he, that's why he hates even to somebody to be mutakabbir alayh. Which is why takabbur under mutakabbir ibada. At takabbur fi wajhir mutakabbir ibada. It's a hadith that to be arrogant with somebody who's arrogant is a type of ibada. So, in, and this is what we call throwing it back in their face. You know, you, you give them a little taste of it. Just, and as a cure, it should be done as a doa, just to let them see how it feels. Mm-hmm. want to draw other people's attention to that so that they yeah. understand that. That's like, Kibron. That's Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That's a big problem. And and this is what, if you uh, if you feel you're a righteous person, that's Kibar. Right away, off the bat. If you feel you're righteous, you're in a state of Kibar. And that's why if you look at the early people, they were people who really... Uh, one of the commands of Abu Hanifa, somebody was sitting with him and he, uh, he moved his foot and the man moved his foot away out of respect, out of deference. He said, why did you do that? He said, out of deference. He said, Limithli? You know, for, for somebody like me? And he said, Wallahi la ara ahad huna ashar minni. I don't see anybody in this gathering worse than me. And that's the way those people were. You know, the, it wasn't a joke. They really did see themselves as... Uh, and that's why, look at Sayyidina Ali, it's a sound hadith. Sayyidina Ali, a man asked him, who, who's better, you or Abu Bakr? He said, Abu Bakr. He said, then, what about you and Umar? He said, Umar. And then he said, he, then he said I didn't want to say Uthman. Because I was worried he'd say Uthman, so I just said, what about you? He said, ma ana illa rajul min al-Muslimin. I'm just a Muslim man. No, no claim, no maqam. And, that, and that's not... You can say that's humble. For us, it's humility looking at it. But for the imam, it's, he's not thinking, oh, it's, I better say in order for me to be humble. Right? No, seriously, that's a disease in itself. Ibn Atayla says, if you're aware of your humility, you're mutakabbir. And that's why right, Uriah Heep. You know that character? Dickens? He's an amazing character. In uh, David Copperfield, right? David Copperfield? Uriah Heep. Oh, in my very humble opinion, sir. You know, he's always, he's a complete hypocrite. But he's always, in my humble opinion, sir. You know, and he's always doing this thing of being, you know, Uriah Heep. (laughs) I know I'm nothing in society, sir, but in my humble opinion, you know. And meanwhile, he's stealing all their money and he's doing all these... You know, so it's a character. Uh-huh. In other words, if you think that you're humble, <laughs> you're mutakabdir. Because you're looking at your humility from a place of height. <laughs> I mean, humility means to be low. So if you can see how low you are, you can only see it from some, <laughs> from some higher place place. It's the kabbal. We're diseased. We just have to do. <laughs> and this is why our scholars do Zalmullah al-Khair. And they said, you know, if, you, if you're not like the real people, at least pretend to be like them. <laughs> you know, seriously, because there's even some benefit in faking it. And even the imam says that. That, you know, just it's better to fake humility than, than to be an outright mutakabbir. And, and that's very clear. One of the things that Imam al-Ghazali radiallahu says is that if you want to learn how to master calligraphy, you go to the master calligrapher and you repeat what he does over and over again. And it's totally unnatural for you, but eventually you will become a master calligrapher. And it's interesting, my sister went to a brain... Uh, uh, this neurosurgeon in Stanford, and one of the things he said is that the brain learns by repetition. And those things that you do most consistently with repetition, 
become completely embedded in the brain, like driving. He, what he said is that most people drive in a completely subconscious state. They're unaware of their driving. And this is the idea of being unaware of your humility, that it's, it's just part of your nature. It's not something you're faking. If you're faking it, you're aware of it. Whereas when it's, it, when it's genuine, there's no, the brain is not conscious of it. So when you drive, because you've done it, when you first start out driving, the best drivers, right, are often people that haven't become good drivers because they're so nervous. These, you know, these poor people that learn with the thing on the top of the car, they're, they're like blinker and they're, they're looking around, they're really fearful. But then there's people driving down, listening to the singing and, and doing all this stuff, thinking about all these things, talking on the cellular phone, and they're the ones that get into the accident, right? Because it's become the driving is completely, uh, they're doing it. Now, what this neurologist said, that the interesting thing about stroke people that lose uh, the, the, their brains and people that go into dementia, often they will retain things that they did most repetitiously. In other words, they can still drive, even though they forgot how to, to do everything else. Because the brain has... It was so repetition, the pathways are so fixed in, in the neuro, uh, neurology of the brain that they're still able to do that. And this is the idea of repetition. In the ilmu ta'allum, ta'allum, you do it with tikrar, over and over again. You have to force yourself to be humble until it really does become your nature. Because most people don't have these things naturally. We're diseased. If we weren't, we wouldn't be studying any of the things we're studying, right? Seriously, that's why we're studying this, because we all recognize it in ourselves. All of us. So, that, uh -huh, that's the... Uh, now, the, the, um, the fourth one is التفاخر بالجمال. Kibr because of beauty. And one of the cures for that is one, it's the old adage, beauty is only skin deep. Beauty is an illusion, right? Uh, first of all, you don't retain your beauty. Everybody loses it uh, ultimately. Second of all, Allah gave it to you. It's not something that you uh, earned or something like that. So being have mutakabbar because of beauty is a very superficial type of takabbar and it's really a stupidity. And the other thing uh, that I find really fascinating is there was a study done on beautiful people and what they found is that beautiful people were actually average. They did all these pictures and, and looked at them and found what people were identifying as beautiful and they found actually people in this culture Beauty is, is an average. It's a mean when it's all put together in one face. So it's an average nose, average eyes, average mouth, but they're all put together on the same face. I thought that was so amazing that beautiful people are average looking. Right? It's a, it's a mean. And that's the idea, you know, خير الأمور أوسطها. I mean, there's a truth to it, right? That, 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 that median, there's something a uh, great deal to be said for it. So it's, it's just a foolish type thing to do that. And there's a, a very frightening hadith about Aisha radiallahu anhu in which the, she, a, a woman came in and the Prophet sallallahu asked who it was and she indicated the short one. And the Prophet sallallahu said, اختبتها. That's backbiting. And the ulama say the reason is is because it was takabbur. Because in other words, had she not seen her height, you know, that she was taller than she was. And so there was a type of uh, takabbur there, which is actually quite uh, frightening, because uh, it, that's an i'jab, right? Mu'jab bi qamatiha or bi quriha, right? And then she sees the other one. So, the Prophet sallallahu uh, rebuked her for that. The fifth one is kibr bin mad. And, and this happens with kings with all their storehouses and merchants with their commodities. And also people who own a lot of land or people who own a lot of clothes and horses or cars now. And they look down on poor people or even rich people that are less rich than them. Like Helmsley, that woman who said about taxes, only the little people pay taxes. 
And I read an interview. Uh, it was a really fascinating interview. It was one of these, uh, I can't remember even who it was, one of these famous, what they call beautiful people in this culture. And they were on a uh, helicopter going up on a ski place. And they were like, the, the, the place down below was a ski lodge for less wealthy people. And they were having a private helicopter take them up the mountain. And uh, this woman said she looked down and, and somebody said at that point, oh, look at all the little people down there. And right at that point, the helicopter tipped over. And they actually crashed. And, but the point is, she got the message. I mean, I, that, some people wouldn't see that. You know, that be very careful about how you look at other people. Right? Because we're all little people. <laughs> Right, it's what what the guy, the the homeless on the street looks up at the CEO, and the CEO is looking down, saying, "Look at all the little people," and and the homeless guys up there, "Look at that little guy up there." You know, <laughs> it's all perspective, right? It's all just perspective. So we're all little people, and that's why the mutakabirun are turned into ants, right? Because they looked at everybody else like they were ants that could be crushed, right? It's a very dangerous thing. And then another one is uh, the um, the uh, the quwa kibar bil quwa or batch somebody who's very strong like uh, uh, Rakana the Musari. You know he when he told the Prophet ﷺ uh, wrestle me the Prophet threw him twice he still didn't become Muslim. Right? And then there's a riway that he did, inshallah he did, I don't know. But the point is, is that, you know, he saw nobody could throw him. He said, I've never been thrown, ever, to kabbur. Right? So this idea of somebody who's strong, have muscles, and, and the amazing thing, they're going to get old, right? It all, you know, right? Then they can't do it. Now, the seventh one is, تَكَبُّرْ بِالْأَتْبَعْ وَرَانْصَارْ وَالْتَلَامِذَا وَالْغِلْمَانْ and by having a lot, like uh, a teacher who has a lot of students. And so he sees himself as better than another teacher who has less students. So, um, somebody who has a lot of friends. Somebody who has a lot of powerful relatives, influential people, right? Somebody who's from the royal family. He's not the king, but he's from the royal family. Mutakabbir because of uh, strength, but it has to do with more like that type of jah and things like that. Very dangerous one. Now, of all of these, uh, and then also to cover because of knowledge, which really is, that is the most, uh, according to the Imam, he says it's, it's, it's one of the most uh, insidious, because again, like being a Sharif, having knowledge is so honored. And having knowledge, the nature of knowledge, is that people uh, respect knowledge. People, many people are often in awe of knowledge. So when somebody does have knowledge, especially if it's a good deal of knowledge, then people will show them deference. And so it becomes dangerous for the heart because they'll start thinking, I'm somebody. You know, I'm important. And this, and this is what shaitan will do to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, قُتِلِ الْإِنسَانُ مَا أَكْفَرَ مِنْ أَيِّ شَيْءٍ خَرَقَ How man has been killed. مَا أَكْفَرَهُ What is more uh, of an ingrate than man? And then Allah says, مِنْ أَيِّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقَ What did we create him from? You know, let man think about what we created him from. He came from a fluid. He didn't even exist before that fluid. He wasn't even a thing that anybody had on their tongue. Uh, fifty years from, uh, for, uh, you know, fifty years ago, you weren't even an idea in your parents' minds. Right? You were nothing, non-existent, and then you came into existence. And 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 when you first came into existence, you know, I mean, changing diapers seven, eight times a day. That's all they do. They just defecate, urinate, sleep, and cry every once in a while. Right? And, and suckle at the breast. That's it. It's unbelievable. Complete. That's human being. And then they grow up 
and get to a point where they have strength and they become arrogant. And then they're going to go because it's curvilinear. If you live long enough, you'll end up where you started. Right? You reach that 40-year point and that's, you know, people think, right? I'm at the top, it's all, I'm, everything's going, right? And then Allah says, مِن نُطْفَةٍ خَلَقَهُ فَقَدَّرَ He created him from a nutfa, this emanating, this uh, fluid, ejaculated fluid that Allah made. فَقَدَّرَهُ Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He, and then He measured out everything for him. Man didn't do that for himself. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَوَلَمْ يَرَى الْإِنسَانِ أَنَّا خَلَقْنَاهُ مِن نُطْفَةٍ فَإِذَا هُوَ خَصِيمٌ مُّبِينٌ Hasn't man thought about it? We created him from a nutfa and now he's this manifest enemy of ours. Right? Allah, it's amazing. I mean, Allah made the human being and then he goes into rebellion against Allah. And he's nothing. Right? I mean, Allah, all, Allah can stir up a little, it's a storm in a, what do they call it? A hurricane in a teacup. Hurricane Mitch. I mean, it's nothing. Nothing, it's just nothing. A little wind in, in uh, one part of the planet, in, in our solar system, in the midst of a universe. It's nothing. And yet, for those people that were hit by it, it's completely <coughs> devastated. All these people lose their houses, their wealth, e everything gone from a wind that Allah sent. And Allah says that in the Quran when they see the wind, they say, Hada aridun mumtiruna. Oh, this is a good wind coming to give us some rain. And it's an adab. So, human beings, you know, the point of all of this is we're just fools to be in rebellion against Allah. And Allah says, أَلَمْ نَجْعَلْ لَهُ عِنَيْنِ وَدِسَنَ وَشَفَتَيْنِ وَهَدَيْنَهُ النَّجْدَيْنِ We gave him a tongue, we gave him two eyes, we gave him this ability to think, all these things. And then we guided him and showed him two roads. And we told him, at the end of this road is a painful punishment. And at the end of this road is a reward. And you choose. And people choose to go down this other way. And it's takabbur. And you can look at the seerah. I guarantee you, you look at every single one of those people that refused to submit. It was all takabbur. It's very clear. The reason people can't submit is takabbur. And if you look at the prayer, the amazing thing about the prayer, there is, and I mentioned this before, there's a type of slavishness in the prayer that some people find very offensive. And there are Western people that have a really hard time with the concept of being a slave of God. Abdullah. They have a real problem with that concept. Because they have this idea, I'm free. But then he's a slave to his, his private parts, his stomach, right? His, 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 uh, his petty goals in life. He's a slave to all these things. He can't control them. He's a complete slave to them. But a slave to Allah? No. I'll be a slave to my genitals, but I won't be a slave to Allah. I'll be a slave to my stomach, but I won't be a slave to Allah. So it's a completely delusional state that the human being goes into. And that's, that's where it is. So he, he's saying that the way to get rid of this uh, disease is first knowing your Lord and knowing yourself. Now obviously that is a big task. S some of them say the only way you can know your Lord is to know yourself. In your own selves don't you see. So Allah tells us to reflect on ourselves. If you reflect on the self, what you come to realize is that you're completely bound. You are Ab. And even Messiah, Ibn Maryam, right? He was not, he was not arrogant to say that he was uh, Abdullah. He accepted that he was Abdullah. Right? He accepted that. So even the Prophet, the Prophet ﷺ said, أَنَا سَيْدُ وَلْبِ آدَمْ وَلَا فَخْرَى I am the best of the children of Adam and I'm not boasting. So that was not takabbur. The ulama say the reason he said that is he was making sure that the sahaba did not understand from that that he was yatakabbur alayhim bi siyadatihi. Because that's what the jahadi Arabs used to do. Ana sayyidukum. They would like make takabbur. He was doing it because he was commanded by Allah to inform them of that. And that's why he said, wala fakhra. I'm not doing this out of fakhr. But the ulama take from that another ishara that not only was he not, there was no fakhr, but 
His fakhr was in his ubudiyah to Allah. It wasn't in his siyada of creation, that he was the master of creation. It was that he was the most perfect slave of Allah. That was where his honor and glory was. Right? Which is why there's a hadith. Some people uh, uh, don't accept it. But Mullah Ali Al-Qari said it. The meaning is true. Fakri fakhri. My impoverishment before Allah is my glory. Right? So, knowing yourself, knowing that, and feeling uh, that those, that whoever knows those two is humbled and feels insignificant. يَتَوَاضَعْ وَيَهُونَ And مَنْ تَوَاضَعْ لِلَّهِ رَفَعْهُ Allah. Whoever is, is humbled for the sake of Allah, Allah raises him up. Allah will raise him up. مَنْ تَوَاضَعْ لِلَّهِ رَفَعْهُ Allah. Right? So, that idea of, of being low for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he says also another thing, مَقَامُهُ يَنْفِي مَقَامَ الشُّكْرِ That the station of kibar negates the possibility of showing gratitude to Allah. Because the way you show gratitude to Allah is through ubudiyah. And if you're mutakabbir, you're not an abd. Because the abd by his nature can't be mutakabbir. That's why he's abd. The abd by his nature cannot be mutakabbir. And therefore, you can't be a shakur to Allah if you're mutakabbir. It's impossible. So he's saying it negates it altogether. And, and then he says, كَمَا تَوَادُعُ لَهُ ذُو جَرِّ The nature of humility is that it takes you to gratitude. Because when you, when you are in a state that's humbled before Allah, everything you see it in its right perspective. That Allah has been so generous to you. That Allah has given you so much. That you don't deserve it. You're undeserving of it. And that feeling of undeserving engenders in you a feeling of gratitude. Because if you feel you deserve something, like the Moroccans say, لا شكر على الواجب. There's no thanks for something that you deserve. Right? If you feel that this is my wajib, then that by its nature does not engender in you a sense of gratitude towards the person. You just feel like, لا 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 أعطاني ما, ما هو حقي. He just gave me my right. You see, so you have to, once you understand that and recognize you are undeserving. And that's why he's saying, حقره. You know, this big mountain of kibar, see it for what it is. It's insignificant, meaningless. And when you do that, you'll bring it down. You'll bring that down. And Allah, we say Allahu Akbar. And that's why even the, traditionally the Muslims, anytime they saw something in somebody or somebody that, you know, Masha Allah, take it back to its source. Allahu Akbar. Allah is greater. It's a reminder constantly. Allahu Akbar minni. Allahu Akbar minkum. Allahu Akbar min ad dunya wa ma fiha. Allahu Akbar. Right? And he's al kabir al muta'ali. And one of the things he says to the mutakabir dhuq in, in, in the antar aziz al Now you taste, you're the aziz now. Right? You're this one. So taste the punishment. Tahakkum in Quran. So, uh, the last thing here is dhul uh, and ba'a. Now, uh huh. Oh, you have to prepare for it? Alright. So we'll do that next week. Um, If you're...